today we're going to look at dividing fractions with models. In part one of this lesson, we looked at using measurement models with fractions. Today we're going to divide fractions with, with which called partitive models. Our goal is to find the quotients of expressions involving two fractions. Let's review our vocabulary. You don't need to copy this down in your notes if you already have it from the previous tutorial. So we know a fraction is written in a over b format, and it represents part of a whole number. A quotient is the answer to a division problem, and the reciprocal, those are two non-zero numbers whose product is 1. For example, the reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1. So let's look at creating a division problem using a partitive model. So we have one-fourth of what number is one and three quarters? So in a measurement model, we broke it up differently. And you can look at the previous tutorial to find examples of that. Looking at the partitive model, we know that one whole, which we can color in, one whole plus three quarters, so we can divide this into quarters and shade in three. So this is one and three quarters. Now, in a measurement model, we would divide it into fourths and check out the answer. But in this case, we're saying that one and three fourths is the answer in retrospect. And that's been divided by fourths. So we need to find out, well, if this is one-fourth, then, of course, two-fourths we can create. So now I can create two-fourths, which is the same as one-half. So now I have three-fourths and four-fourths. So now I can color in my models. And basically what I'm saying here is now I'm looking at all of these pieces. So I have one, two, three, four holes. So I have four holes here. And then I have, but I have to look at these in a different way. So I really need to look at how many fourths I have, which is the same as four holes. So I have 16 fourths plus, which of course we've established is four, plus, and then I have three, six, nine, twelve fourths, whoops, twelve fourths, which happens to be three holes. So I have four holes plus three holes, which gives me seven whole numbers. So that's looking at the division in a different way. Instead of thinking, them, thinking of them as little bits and pieces, now we're looking at, okay, well, it's almost a multiplication problem, except I'm using algebra in a way. Another way of wording it is saying one-fourth of what number just means times a number and I would use a variable of n or x, is 1 and 3 quarters. And this partitive model may not make the most sense to you now, but it actually will help you when we get into more algebraic expressions later on. So again, we have our 1 fourth representation. So we, of course, if that's divided into 1 fourth, we can see how we can change our division problem into 7 holes. Let's look at another example. So we have one-eighth of a number is one-fourth. One-eighth of a number is one-fourth, which is a, another way of saying one-fourth divided by one-eighth is what? So first we need to, of course, 
figure out one fourth. We're going to start with our first. Well, we have half and we have quarters. So I have one fourth here. So now I can divide it into eighths. And I can see how many pieces I have. So if one fourth is my whole, how many when I divide it into eighths? Well, I can see that I have two holes in this case. A good question to ask you is how many fourths do I have? So this should not be confused with a multiplication problem when we're just dividing it. In fact, I should have just duplicated the example like I did in the previous one. And you would have noticed that I have two. But again, it's not two fourths in this case. It's two whole pieces. We're going to look at one final example. So we have one half of what number is one sixteenth? which just means one sixteenth divided by one half. This is a problem that you're going to do on your own. Go ahead and take a minute to pause and you can write it down now. Go ahead and see if you can figure it out. Now let's look at another example. One half of what number is one eighth? Well, I can see that that's just one eighth divided by halves. Clean that up for you. So we'll start with one eighth. So I've shaded in one eighth of my model. And so I know that this is divided into half. Well, that means I need another one. So, so I can say half of what number is one eighth? So I should probably do that by duplicating. And part of you need to think logically. Well, if one half of what number? Well, we can see that if instead of being eighths, these were fourths, we would have two. So we would have two fourths. Let me divide that into fourths more clearly. So we have one, two, three, four pieces of the whole. So that gives us two eighths. Because and we can see that that would shade in one quarter. And I know that partitive models often sound like the opposite way of looking at things, but when you get into unit rate, they actually make more sense. When dividing fractions by fractions, they're a little bit less concrete, but you do need to know how to use the models. So that would give us 2 eighths, which of course is one quarter. And I'm sorry I put two fourths before I meant, because these each were eighths. That would be two of them to get to. If this is half, then we need to double it or multiply it by two, basically, in order to get to our answer. So let's revisit the previous example that you've worked on by itself. Well, we've already gone over the answer for partitive uh, division. We have one eighth divided by one half. In your previous sample, you had one sixteenth divided by one half. So look at the answer for one eighth. Think about any connections you have between eighths and sixteenths. You're dividing by one half. So think about how your answer might change, but how it might not be too different from your previous one. Notice any patterns and make sure that those are things that you put in your questions main ideas and keys. Go ahead and take a minute to look over your notes. I've left the one that you did on your 
own blank because of course I want you to try working that out on your own. Go ahead and make sure that your notes have all the information you need. Your models may look slightly different, your drawings may be slightly different, but the content should be the same. So good job today on partitive models. I know that some of you might think that they're not as logical as measurement models. Some of you might actually find them easier. It just depends on your way of visualizing division of fractions. In other tutorials, we look at dividing fractions by multiplying by reciprocals, and there's ways to use models for those as well. So make sure you check out the other videos and you're studying all the different ways of figuring out division of fractions. I know it may seem that there's a lot of different ways to do it, but having more options, of course, helps your grades and helps you solve math problems more critically.